NARP syndrome is a mitochondrial disorder. Neuropathy, ataxia, retinitis pigmentosa, and uh, it is a maternally inherited condition. And there are seizures, sensory neuropathy, dementia, and weakness. That is that characterizes the NARP syndrome. Is what you need to remember. So neurogenic muscle weakness. That is myopathy. Ataxias, retinitis pigmentosa, dementia, seizures, migraine, and mental retardation. If you do the muscle biopsy as such, it will be normal. And uh, biochemically, if you test, then you will find a abnormal adipase activity and low levels of citrulline in the blood, which is an important surrogate marker. And uh, genetically, it is uh, the... Um, uh, mitochondrial inheritance is what you need to remember. A three-year-old kid accidentally swallowed a small button battery. It's a very common uh, clinical problem. I think casualty posting in internship is for one month. So in this one month casualty, I am very sure you got a chance to do venisection resuscitate a OP poisoning case and find a child who has swallowed a some foreign body. So what do you want to do? It is being found in the stomach. What is the next appropriate step? Just assure the patients. Tell them. Nowadays endoscopically we are giving a, a small uh, capsule endoscopy it is called. The people will take a capsule camera and next day, they pass that in the motion and they capture that camera and that camera's uh, pictures are being interpreted. So we are in that modern era. Don't worry about the battery. Um, uh, button battery is what you need to reassure. But how does the X-ray look like? It looks like typically this is the gas shadow in the stomach and this is how you will identify the presence of the button battery. So what is the important thing in this entire story? Ames examiner ke question bank me foreign body swallowing by a pediatric patient is there in radiology question bank and also in the pediatrics question bank. So that is the reason once more examiner may give an x-ray like this and ask you what do you want to do. So you must be doubly sure to face it. A 40 year old male right lateral aspect of the anterior two thirds of the tongue the lesion was 2.5 to 3.5 centimeters in size. The biopsy shows a squamous cell carcinoma. No palpable cervical lymphadenopathy. What is the TNM stage? By chance, by chance, Ranjit says that recent update is endoscopic removal in emergency. I am not very sure on the update, but let us recheck it. Yeah, a good point. Now, 40 year old, what do you want to do with the staging of the tongue cancer? If you didn't go through that standard question asked by the examiner, the table of the American Journal uh, uh, of Cancer Society's uh, um, uh, Joint Commission for Cancer, uh, if you don't uh, review that uh, list of TNM, you can't help at all in the exam. Definitely they will ask because in this country, oropharyngeal cancer is the most common cancer. T1 is less than 2 centimeters, T2 is 2 to 4 centimeters, T3 is more than 4 centimeters and uh, typically uh, T4A is an invasive uh, lesion is what you have to basically remember. You call it as TX. Doctor is unable to assess the primary tumor. T0 if the, he is unable to find the primary tumor. Then you have a TIS, T1, T2, T3, T4A and T4B. T4B is when it is very much locally advanced. So similarly you have a N1, N2A, N2B, N2C, N3. It all dependent upon 
how is the lymph node lymph node is less than 3 cm it is n1 3 to 6 cm ipsilaterally then it is n2a if it is less than 6 cm n2b and if it is less than 6 but contralaterally also it has spread it is n2c and it is called n3 if it is more than 6 cm ipsilaterally and contralaterally if it is also palpable tumor then a palpable lymph node then that become the n3 is what you have to basically remember somehow you have to master this because one more question is going to come in the need pg 2019 also that is there is a reason then mg m0 is no evidence of metastasis m1 is the presence of the metastasis so you call stage 0 if it is in situ t n0 m0 stage 1 if it is t1 n0 m0 stage 2 if it is t2 n0 m0 stage 3 you call it if it is t3 n0 m0 or t1 n1 m0 t2 n1 m0 or t3 n1 m0 that means m is always 0 in the stage 3 also only in the case of the stage 4 uh, typically in the 4a uh, there is a uh, cable so i'm not going to read for you you need to master the typical both tnm staging and also the stage 1 2 3 somehow mug it and represent in the tomorrow's exam how much time you should transfuse the packed rbc once more a repeat question what was asked in november 2017 was also repeated in may 2017 2018 so you need to finish it within four hours after the arrival of the blood from the blood bank to the ward as a junior resident you have to finish it within four hours transfusion should be over what is the second phase of the damage control surgery is a very very important question good i am happy to see nivedita sean deepayan keep punching your answers and uh, keep adding some points if you have something in your mind that is how you can make this session a little more lively uh, don't think it is a disturbance no not at all you need to keep punching the answers parallelly and uh, I keep telling my points to you. I also came prepared to the session just like you. Okay. So that is a whole idea. So in the ICU. So what is second phase? Typically in the damage control surgery. In the phase one. You will select the patient. Phase two you control the hemorrhage. And you will be um, controlling the contamination. That is stage 2. Stage 3 is you will be doing resuscitation in the intensive care unit. And um, I mean uh, you will be continuing the resuscitation in the intensive care unit. Which you have started in the stage 2. To control the hemorrhage and uh, um, contamination. Stage 4 is definitive surgery. And stage 5 is abdominal closure that's how you do the typical uh, damage control surgery is what you have to basically remember so that is the reason the second phase to control the contamination and to control the bleeding you will be doing it in the icu is what you have to basically remember